something was detected almost 400 astronomical units from the Sun, 13 times farther than Neptune, where, according to every accepted model, nothing sizable should exist. Teams using advanced sky surveys flagged a faint, slow-moving object far past the edge of the known solar system, igniting debates that echo past shocks like Sedna and Oumuamua. If this object is real, it could rewrite the story of how our solar system formed, hint at hidden populations, or even force us to rethink the boundaries of planetary science itself. But how could something get there? And what could it mean for the future of exploration, or for the safety of everything closer in? The evidence so far is both remarkable and unsettling, and reveals a gap in our cosmic understanding that demands explanation. 400 astronomical units, that's about 60 billion kilometers from the Sun, or 13 times farther out than Neptune. At that distance, sunlight is so faint it's barely more than a glimmer, and the solar wind is stretched thin across a volume so vast it defies ordinary imagination. If you tried to picture the solar system on a classroom poster, Neptune would already be at the edge. This object would be far beyond the wall, somewhere out in the dark of the hallway. But even in these remote reaches, the latest generation of sky surveys has made the invisible visible. Modern sky surveys like pan stars scan enormous swaths of the sky every night, using digital cameras sensitive enough to pick out a single faint dot moving slowly against the star field. These instruments don't just take pretty pictures, they're designed to detect changes as small as a fraction of an arc second. A measurement so fine it's like spotting a coin on the moon from your backyard. At 400 astronomical units, an object's apparent motion is glacial, sometimes shifting only a few pixels over several nights. That's why survey automation is essential. Computer algorithms sift through millions of detections, hunting for anything that moves just enough to stand out from the noise. The scale of these surveys is hard to overstate. Pan stars alone collect several terabytes of data each night, flagging thousands of moving objects for follow-up. Most turn out to be asteroids or comets much closer in, but every so often, something appears that doesn't fit any known category. To spot a candidate at 400 astronomical units, the system must be sensitive to objects fainter than magnitude 24, requiring exposures that push the limits of current technology. These are the tools that have turned the outer solar system from a blank canvas into a landscape filled with surprises. And so, when a faint, slow-moving object is flagged at such a distance, it's not just a technical triumph, it's a reminder of how much remains unexplored. The sheer reach of these surveys means that even the emptiest parts of the solar system are under watch, and that every new detection could be the first sign of something that challenges the boundaries of what we think is possible. The next questions, how such an object could exist there, and what it might tell us about the solar system's past, echo the same sense of wonder that has always driven discovery. Astronomers have learned to expect surprises from the outer solar system, but each new discovery has managed to rewrite the rules in its own way. In 2003, Sedna was spotted with an orbit so stretched out that its farthest point lies over 900 astronomical units from the Sun. Sedna doesn't come anywhere near Neptune, which means its path can't be explained by the usual gravitational nudges from the giant planets. Instead, its existence forced scientists to consider new possibilities. Maybe a passing star disturbed the early solar system, or maybe there's a whole population of distant bodies hiding in the dark, waiting to be found. A couple of years later, Eris entered the scene. Slightly larger than Pluto and orbiting far beyond it, Eris triggered a debate that eventually led to Pluto's reclassification as a dwarf planet. The discovery of Eris, and then other large objects like Haumea and Makamake, revealed that the Kuiper Belt extends farther 
and contains more massive bodies than anyone had guessed. But even these worlds, with their distant orbits, are still much closer than the 400 astronomical unit mark. Then came Oumuamua in 2017, a true outsider. Unlike anything seen before, Oumuamua was moving too fast to be bound to the Sun. Its hyperbolic trajectory marked it as the first known interstellar object passing through our neighborhood. It was followed by Tubomai slash Borisov in 2019, a comet with a similar interstellar origin but much more familiar behavior. These detections proved that not all visitors are native to our solar system, and that the sky holds objects from far beyond our own star. Even among objects that do belong to the Sun, the discoveries keep pushing the boundaries. Far Out, discovered in 2018, sits more than 120 astronomical units away, and Far Far Out, announced in 2019, is currently the most distant confirmed solar system object at about 132 astronomical units. Each of these finds came as a surprise, and each forced astronomers to revisit their ideas about how the solar system was built and what might still be lurking on its fringes. This pattern of unexpected discoveries has shaped the way scientists approach the unknown. Every time an object appears where nothing was supposed to be, the models are revised, the search widens, and the sense of possibility grows. The detection of a candidate at 400 astronomical units doesn't just add another dot to the map. It fits into a long history of surprises that have steadily expanded the frontier of the solar system. And if the past is any guide, it's a reminder that the story out there is far from finished. When the first signal appeared in the data, it barely registered. A speck of light, fainter than magnitude 24, creeping across the digital sky at just two-tenths of an arc second per hour. That's a pace so slow, it takes hours for the object to even shift a single pixel on the detector. Most moving points flagged by the system end up being asteroids or comets much closer to home, streaking along at a much faster clip. But this one was different. Its motion matched what you'd expect for something hundreds of astronomical units away, far beyond the orbit of any known planet. The challenge, of course, is separating a genuine moving object from the endless parade of cosmic rays, background galaxies and noise. Survey software tackles this by looking for consistent, repeated motion over multiple exposures, always checking, always cross-referencing. Even then, the brightness is barely above the background, and the risk of a false positive is high. For an object at this distance, confirmation can't rely on a single night's data. The team needs to see it move, just enough, on at least two or three separate occasions. Only then does a faint dot become a candidate worthy of closer scrutiny. At this stage, every detail matters. The apparent motion, the faintness, the consistency across different filters, all of these are checked against formal criteria before the object can be logged as a potential discovery. In practice, it's a painstaking process, one that requires patience and a willingness to chase after the faintest traces in a sky full of distractions. But it's these exacting standards that make the difference between a fleeting artifact and a genuine new object in the outer solar system. When a candidate object appears at the edge of the solar system, the next step is a careful, methodical process to separate discovery from illusion. The Minor Planet Center, or MPC, acts as the clearinghouse for these claims. Before anything becomes official, the MPC requires a set of independent observations, ideally from multiple nights and, if possible, from different observatories. Each image must show the faint dot moving in a way that cannot be explained by noise or background stars. Only after this repeat motion is confirmed does the MPC assign a provisional designation a kind of placeholder that signals a possible new member of the solar system's family. But even a provisional label is not a stamp of certainty. The team needs to check the object's movement against existing catalogues, ruling out known asteroids, comets, or even satellites. 
Sometimes, a supposed discovery turns out to be a previously catalogued object seen in a new position, or an artifact caused by a cosmic ray. To guard against these mix-ups, astronomers comb through archival images in a process called pre-covery, searching for the same object in older data. Each successful match strengthens the case for a real, persistent body at that location. Throughout this process, every detail, timestamp, sky position, brightness, is logged and cross-checked. The MPC's standards are strict because the stakes are high. A false positive at this distance could mislead the entire field. Until the object's motion is confirmed over several nights and vetted against every known source of error, its status remains provisional. This gatekeeping ensures that only genuine discoveries are added to the official record and that each new claim withstands the highest level of scrutiny. With a candidate object flagged at such an extreme distance, the next challenge is pinning down its orbit, and that's where the real uncertainty begins. The faintness and slow motion mean that, even with repeated detections, the data points are spread thin across the sky. Each measurement comes with its own margin of error, and at 400 astronomical units, even a tiny uncertainty in position translates into a huge range of possible orbits. Astronomers tackle this by generating thousands of simulated orbits, called clones, each one tweaked within the measurement uncertainties. These clones are not just mathematical curiosities, they represent every physically plausible path the object could be taking, given the data so far. The spread among these clones can be dramatic. For a distant candidate, the semi-major axis might range from 300 to over 500 astronomical units, while the eccentricity could swing from nearly circular to highly elongated. The closest approach to the Sun, what astronomers call perihelion, could vary by tens of astronomical units from one clone to the next. Some orbits might keep the object safely detached from the known planets for millions of years, while others could bring it closer in, or even send it drifting out toward the Oort cloud. The only constant is that the true path remains hidden inside a cloud of possibilities until more data can narrow it down. This uncertainty window isn't just a technicality. It means that, at this stage, astronomers can't say with confidence whether the object is a permanent resident of the solar system, a recent arrival, or even a visitor passing through. The error bars are wide enough that any scenario remains on the table. Every new observation, every faint dot added to the record, helps collapse that window. But until then, the story of the object's orbit is written in probabilities, not certainties. For now, the only thing that's clear is how much is still unknown and how much depends on the next round of data. Testing the stability of a candidate object at 400 astronomical units means putting it through the most rigorous simulations available. Astronomers use what are called n-body integrations, which factor in the gravity of the Sun, all four giant planets, and sometimes even the subtle tug of the galaxy itself. For each possible orbit that fits the limited observations, thousands of slightly different versions, called clones, are generated. Each clone is then tracked for millions or even billions of years in the virtual solar system to see what happens next. Most of these simulated orbits don't last. The vast majority are unstable, especially if the object's path ever brings it within reach of Neptune or Uranus. Even a distant brush with a giant planet can scatter a small body onto a wildly different trajectory or eject it from the solar system entirely. Published studies show that for orbits with both a large semi-major axis, over 250 or even 400 astronomical units, and a perihelion closer than about 45 astronomical units, the odds of surviving for the age of the solar system are vanishingly small. In fact, the probability of forming such an orbit just by Neptune's gravitational scattering is less than 1 in 10 million. But some orbits do survive. If a clone's perihelion stays well beyond the reach of the known planets, say, above 50 astronomical units, the simulations show remarkable long-term stability. These paths can persist for billions of years, protected from planetary encounters by sheer distance. However, even these stable orbits aren't immune to disruption. Over cosmic timescales, galactic tides and rare close encounters with passing stars can nudge distant objects, 
slowly reshaping their paths or sending them drifting into the void. The upshot is that, for a candidate at 400 astronomical units, only a narrow range of orbital possibilities can last for the long haul. Most of the standard formation mechanisms, like scattering from Neptune, just don't produce enough survivors. This leaves astronomers searching for alternative explanations, whether that means invoking the influence of an unseen massive planet, a long-ago stellar encounter, or something even more exotic. The stability tests act as a reality check, showing which scenarios are plausible and which are almost certainly ruled out by the numbers. Three leading ideas compete to explain how an object could end up more than 400 astronomical units from the Sun. The Planet 9 hypothesis proposes a hidden giant, 5 to 10 times Earth's mass, whose gravity shapes the orbits of distant bodies, clustering them in a common direction. If Sedna and this new object share such alignment, Planet 9 gains ground. But if the new orbit points elsewhere, the theory stumbles. Another scenario reaches back to the Sun's earliest days. In the crowded birth cluster, a passing star might have nudged a group of icy bodies onto wide, stable orbits. This would scatter objects in all directions, producing orbits that are isotropic rather than aligned. If future discoveries show orbits pointing every which way, a stellar encounter becomes more plausible. A third idea suggests capture. The object originated around another star and was snatched by the Sun during a close pass billions of years ago. Such captures are rare and depend on how packed the Sun's nursery really was. Each hypothesis makes a clear prediction. Aligned orbits support Planet 9. Random orientations favor a stellar encounter or capture. The next discoveries will test these possibilities. No immediate threat comes from a faint dot at 400 astronomical units but the discovery pushes every part of planetary science into new territory. For now, the object's orbit keeps it far from the planets and well outside any danger zone for Earth. Still, astronomers know that each new find out here hints at a much larger, hidden population, one that could someday matter for planetary defense, even if this particular body never comes close. That's why the search is only accelerating the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, now preparing for full operations, will scan the sky with the sensitivity and speed never before possible. Its massive camera will capture the entire visible sky every few nights, reaching objects even fainter and farther than those found so far. Rubin's data will not just confirm or rule out the current candidate, it will also reveal whether the solar system's outskirts are truly empty or if they're filled with undiscovered worlds. Each new survey, each deeper scan, brings another chance to rewrite the map and to answer questions that, until now, no one even thought to ask. The detection of an object roughly 400 astronomical units from the Sun, 13 times farther than Neptune, was confirmed by multiple nights of observations with a signal-to-noise ratio above 5. This finding stands out because, until now, no known solar system object with a stable orbit has been confirmed at such a distance. While the Minor Planet Center's provisional designation and follow-up data establish the object's reality, its precise orbit and origin remain uncertain. Historical precedents, from Sedna to Oumuamua, show that discoveries at the solar system's edge often force a rewrite of established models. Today, the main questions how this object arrived at such an extreme orbit and whether others like it exist, are unanswered. Planned surveys by the Vera C. Rubin Observatory are expected to test current theories. For now, the existence of this distant object challenges our understanding, proving that even the outermost solar system remains a frontier for discovery.